They'll be calling you a radical. When I was in the hospital last winter, especially October, November, December, on the brink of death, I set goals, many goals, and long-term goals. You know, at first the goals were be awake and be alive by, you know, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. You know, make, be alive by Christmas. But I've been waiting all year for this day. This ran through my mind a lot because this was, a year ago was right when I started feeling sick. And I did, I'm a derivative trader. Have been my whole life. I'm a freelance derivative trader. I've worked in the hedge fund industry for years, a consultant. I've taught this subject matter for years. I was an arbitrage specialist via derivatives. Huge successful career. Long story. But anyway, as you guys know that watch my videos, I'll tag the video. A year ago today, I made one of the greatest calls of my derivative career. One of the greatest ever. On Apple, I said, you know, what was Apple trading that day? I said, buy the April 580s. Everybody says, you're fucking crazy, you're nuts. I told you how to do it, where to do it, why to do it, exactly where to do it. They were trading at about 35 cents that day, which means $35 that day. As the winter went on, I would get emails in the hospital. Sometimes I could use a laptop, some size I couldn't. As it went on, a guy, people would hear me, hey, Kev, what about this, blah, blah, blah. I'm dying here, I'm dying here. As you know, I had a, a really nice stock portfolio that I had brought off the bottom that was worth, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars. I had to ink it up to save my life. I, had to, I gave my whole portfolio to save my life. I said April 580s, they're taking at 35 cents. They ended up only being worth $90 a piece. That's what they were ended up worth in April. And I want to talk about three years ago when I started this whole YouTube gig of mine. Well, I was in it for years, 27 months. I was working on a PhD called Post Ignorance, trying, you know, it's an art cultural shift. I mean, trying to understand why this country is so fucking stupid and pathetic. As I went through this, especially with my finance, I learned something that I knew that laid out there, but I learned something that was so deep. People don't want the fucking truth. I've understood that. I've learned it. When I was on Wall Street, I was a huge... I, I would outperform many of these guys by ten times. Did I make as much as they did? No, I made less than they did. I've learned that America is a demographic of idealism their cognitive process is so ingrained in their own fucking belief system, irregardless of fact, knowledge, truth. They don't give a fuck. They're just looking for something to feed. It's like when Glenn Beck, when Barack Obama was elected, he said, Ah, half white man's billion, the Dow's going to 2,000, so, 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 when the Dow was at 7,000. Worked out nice for you. I said it to the dean that day, as I managed our endowment in huge, massive inherited wealth, and he and I got outvoted by a bunch of Kool-Aid drinking fucking maniacs. They sold fucking, huh, they sold right at the fucking bottom. I've inherited wealth. They kissed my fucking ass. They're pieces of shit. Fuck, man. I was managing two inherited wealth in this town. Both. Huge inherited wealth who I worked side by side with both their fathers and their grandfather for that hard working construction guys. Pompous fucking handed fucking huge wealth on a silver. Married gold digging fucking whores for wives. And these gold digging whores, I mean, that's purely, I mean, I'm not being sexual and sexist on them. These are gold digging whores, blatantly, blatantly. I mean, freely would admit it, both these guys fell for it. When Obama got elected, they'd been losing money, losing. I said, give me a piece of it. You know, and the hedge fund works two and 20. I said, I'll do it for one and 10. Okay? I bought them each a million dollars worth of Apple stock. It was $90 that day. Ninety dollars. We know what it is today. As it started to evolve, both their wives. Oh, that Kevin's nothing but a womanizing, gambling, freaking Guinness drinking, yin, 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 yin. Yeah, so? So? What's that got to fucking do with my fucking performance on your fucking portfolio? They better both fucking sell. One of them's getting ready to file bankruptcy fucking right now. He inherited ten million. Ten million. 
They're getting ready. As they've had a Mormon hairsprayed, as so many of you. Uh, one of the Mormon made-offs over here, he goes to church and says, hey, give me your money, little old lady, so I can fucking rob you. Two and a half years ago, I put up a video on my portfolio, and I got into a debate with some early YouTube subscribers. We had bets. We had one asshole in the hedge fund who came to me, just found me, $10,000 bet that I would outperform. Okay, let's talk about it. Six, four, ten. We each bought five equities. That's all we did. We didn't use the derivative mark because it was, you know, just an equity. First one I bought, Philip Morris at $19 with a 7% dividend yield. Let's talk about dividend yield. Why is it so good to buy high dividend yield stocks? Because what is a high dividend yield stock? It implies one of two things. One, it implies that the equity is trading way too low. You got a 7% dividend yield, that equity is way too low. Or there's trouble on the horizon. There's some corruption in the management that nobody knows. But why does that rarely happen in a dividend stock? Rarely, because they're mature companies. And once a company declares a dividend, for the dividend to go away is pure suicide. They're over. They're done. The CEO's done. Everybody's done. So it rarely, rarely happens. So we bought that. What is it trading today? Okay, equity number two I buy was Apple at $269. What's it trading at now? Okay. I shorted AIG at $43. Shorted. Okay, what's that trading at now? This is my favorite stock that I own for years and years and years, that built my big house, that freaking put my kids through college. Well, my older one. IBM. What did I pay for that that day? $119. It pays a dividend. Go back to Apple. Apple pays a dividend. Okay? So we have Apple. We have Philip Morris. We shorted AIG. Now where did I get it wrong? I shorted gold. I shorted gold at 1369. It's at 1720. Lost there. Okay, equally weighted five. We had a contest. Okay, with the math. In my class, I used to give this problem out. We would take a stock portfolio and I would make my students break it down into what is the return. And I wouldn't. I wouldn't dock them if they, you know, they'd get the number exactly right. Almost all my students, they have financial calculators. As I've had finance students come to me and say, Kevin, please do some more of your videos because they're out there in the real world. But I only had two students ever get it completely right all the way because they're dividends. You need to incorporate the dividend yield into the return. Do the math on that portfolio. Those are home runs. Those are home runs. Apple, mega, mega. That derivative call my life. Whoa. Did anybody who watched those calls, there were people watching my videos making money off my freaking calls. When I got sick, was dying in the hospital, I had to hand over my entire stock portfolio. Completely broke. I was naked. I was between teaching contracts. I'm a freelance freaking guy on the arbitrage industry. My boss, two and a half years ago, our entire firm, three years ago, got replaced by a computer. Our whole firm. Into all of us, every fucking one of us. And I had a boss with that, I had a bet with that pompous, arrogant piece of fucking shit. I said, I will outperform your fucking computer, I will slaughter your fucking computer. I will fucking double your return on their fucking computer. He says, if you double that return, like here, I'll, I'll bet you right now, 10000 I said, fuck that, let's double it. Anyway, double it or nothing, up to 40000 Okay, this is supposedly a guy that I worked for, acquaintance, an old pompous ass, arrogant Wall Street piece of shit who inherited every dime he ever fucking made. Got the talk about a gold digging whore, his fucking old lady. <laughs> but anyway, when I'm in the hospital fucking dying, you know, you think people like that are going to come to you. People that you made financial, people that have a lot of money, are going to come to your side and aid. Oh no. As John Steinbeck said, if you are ever in fucking need, go to the poor, go to the poor. They're the only ones to fucking help. As the rich seem to be lacking of 
richness in culture, richness in art, to put it bluntly, they are a poor bunch of bastards, John Steinbeck. As literature has evolved in this country to a fucking joke. I mean, Jesse Ventura, New York Times best really? Really? As 99% of everything you see on YouTube is such fucking junk. As such fucking junk. Well, I shouldn't say that. 90%. 10% is solid as fuck. But that's fucking better than what you see on the fucking media, on that fucking box. 100% of that is fucking junk. I was watching Larry, Jesse Ventura on Larry King. You know, Larry, when they fucking was going to assassinate fucking, you know, Abraham Lincoln, you know they tried to get the vice president and the Do you know that was conspiracy? Like he just found, I'm like, did you skip the third fucking grade? As I get people to come to me, oh, do you know this guy was a mason? Really? Really? Oh, you're some intellectuals. I mean, when people used to write and read Steinbeck, they used to write and read Rachel Carson, they used to write and read, I mean, all this dynamic, serious stuff. And look what's going on. Malcolm Gladwell, that fraud. Speaking of Philip Morris, you do know that's who's been sponsoring him the whole time. He's a fucking con. They're fraud. The 1% is a giant fucking fraud house of fucking cotton. And who's to blame? The masses. Because you fuckers don't want the truth. You don't want fucking how to fucking make money. You want to fucking be feed into your demographic. That's all. Oh, the Federal Reserve. I love the Federal Reserve fucking morons. As these guys just get in me and I says, I, and the Mormon thesis. These guys get into it with me. This guy, I expose Mormons that come to me. <laughs> I'm like, boy, dude, did you come to the wrong fucking spot, motherfucker? I'll eat you a fucking lie. It's like the fucking, these Federal Reserve so-called experts. We read two walking pages in a fucking book. <laughs> I'm an expert. These subject matters are complicated. That's why none of these fuckers will ever have five. five. Yeah, am I down and out sick? Yeah. I'm recovering, but you know what? I've been rich before. I've lived a lot of life. I've fucking done a lot of fucking things. Life is a roller coaster. It is fucking up and down. You know, it's the fucking environmental poison trying to take me. But let me tell you something. You young people, you just look and be a contrarian. You be a contrarian. I always fall back to this. That was written in 1929, 1933. The subject matter, every single article that's in there, how about that ad? Every single article that's in there is history repeating itself. It really is. It's the same mental demo demagoguery. These fucking morons don't want truth. These fucking fools. And what is my call now on the market? Oh, I have two fucking beautiful derivative calls. Let me show you what my two derivative calls are as far as I'm going to tell you what to buy. All you Fed guys, all you fucking derivative traders, all y'all try, you Wall Street guys that think you're experts, I got a really great one for you. Go fuck yourself. Nobody get free from fucking me anymore. None. No, none. Fuck you. If you're Kashima, I'll report that in fucking detail because that is just my fucking duty as a fucking person with cancer who has all this fucking knowledge. It is my dirt duty to do that. I have to do that. I have to do it because it's so important to our unborn, to the little kids. Because I'm so sick of baby boomers, I could fucking puke. They're fucking pathetic motherfuckers. They were handed the greatest fucking society in the history of the world, and they fucking destroyed it into a piece of shit. As these fucking Mormons here call themselves Christians, you're not fucking Christians. None of you evangelicals are Christian, y'all. You're all a bunch of self-indulged, sick, twisted motherfuckers. This is for the fucking youth. I'll report Fukushima so that the fucking my grandkids and my kids and fucking all these beautiful young fucking people get a shot as we fuck them. We fuck them. I seen this video the other day. It's crazy. How we bought you a cow? Oh, yeah, really? You know what kind of opportunities we were handed by our fucking parents? You know what kind of country we were handed by our parents and our grandparents and our great-grandparents? We were handed a fucking country with opportunity, no fucking debt. The average American made $106,000 a fucking year in 1975, today's dollar. That's working class people. We have protectionism. As these fairy tale Kool Aid drinking hairsprayed fucking maniacs have tricked you into fucking you blowing your fucking head off. Into popping fucking pills. Into all kinds of fucking twisted fucking escapism. Fuck the baby boomer. Fuck every last one of them. They get what they deserve. Go listen to fucking Glenn back in time to sell your fucking Dow at 7,000. Buy gold. How'd that work out for you? I like all these fuckers. Oh, I bought up gold. Yeah, you bought it at 13, and you bought it at 1,200, and you bought it at 1,400. And you sold it when you could have bought fucking Apple and fucking made 700%. You could have bought the fucking Dow made 100%. Yeah, you got fucking 20, 30 fucking percent. 
Look what you fucking lost. It's called opportunity cost. You young people, be a contrarian. Don't listen to any of these baby boomer pieces of shit. Some hairsprayed motherfucker at your church or whatever comes to tell you how you money. Call the fucking police. Kevin Blanche.